so um, my name is Jen Malloy, I'm one of the co-organisers of GOSH, and um, it's my job to outline a little bit about what GOSH, the Gathering for Open Science Hardware, is about. Um, before that, a little notice that if you're tweeting or doing any other social media activity, please use the hashtag GOSH2017. Our documentation team will be forever grateful for your contributions, so thank you very much. Um, so without hardware, there is no science. And without open hardware, there's no truly open science because instruments, reagents, and lab equipment are really the platforms for producing systematic knowledge. And in the gathering for open science hardware, we include not only electronics, but low-tech, no-tech, biological materials, and more in our definition of hardware. So the first gathering came about as a result of a group of individuals and organisations experiencing through their own work the negative impact of existing scientific supply chains and the limited access to technologies for a wide range of communities affecting who, how and for what purpose scientific activities can take place. And that work spanned engineering sterile mosquitoes, working with communities affected by industrial pollution, developing an open research platform for plant phenotype data, environmental action research on marine plastics, creating interactions between scientists and artists, using open technologies to address sustainable development goals, and more. The currently hardware is often difficult to source and customize, and that impedes creativity in the scientific enterprise. And these problems are compounded by time markups, proprietary designs, and patterns. <laughs> so we recognize that open science hardware addresses part of this problem, by sharing designs, instructions for building, and protocols for using the equipment, devices, and systems. And we've had a fantastic introduction to the breadth of the activity in open science hardware through the tabled activities and posters that you just saw. Expanding the reach of um, open source hardware within the science space um, is something that we feel very strongly needs to happen, both within academic research, but also NGO initiatives, citizen science, and education. And expanding that reach of open science hardware has the potential to increase access to experimental tools and facilitate their customization and reuse while lowering costs. So a growing number of people and organizations are developing and using open science hardware, but a coherent and self-organized international community um, had yet to emerge that could drive the required social change within institutions and affecting change through laws, policies, and common practice that will make open science with open hardware the norm. So the GOSH organizers, with others who couldn't be here in Santiago, such as Francois Gray and Ernst Galvens, organized GOSH 2016 to address what we still see as a primary barrier to open science hardware. Early adopters, like many of yourselves, are disparate and were separated by geographical and disciplinary boundaries, um, which can limit interaction, exchange, and community building. I'm sure all of you have discovered someone today doing something that you didn't know existed, and it's really, really relevant for your own work. And it's those barriers that we're trying to break down. So our inaugural gathering at CERN in 2016 brought together 50 of the most active developers, thinkers, users in open science hardware complemented by expertise from a really diverse range of backgrounds to seed that global community. And Greg is going to say a few words about what happens at that gathering um, and the resulting community manifesto. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so at GOSH 2016, um, as Jenny said, our, our initial impetus was was primarily just to get people together who had similar ideas. You know, it was um, a lot of people thinking the same thing who didn't have a conference to talk about it at. Um, so that was the primary goal, but I think what ended up happening was um, some ideas and concepts and real initiative emerged that was not initially planned. And uh, that's in part why um, we're here today, and in part why um, we're going to hopefully create a roadmap and try to push this forward, because there is real and genuine interest um, to, to not just have this be sort of a, a networking session, though that's useful, but also to really push and promote an agenda. So um, in 2016, we had uh, unconference sessions, not unlike here. And from those unconference sessions emerged a variety of, of core topics. Um, and we took those core topics 
uh, sat in the top of a bus and tried to make sense out of them. Uh, and so uh, at the conference, um, Max and I primarily sat down and tried to work those things into um, a manifesto because uh, outside of that particular gathering, the definition and importance that Jenny just assigned to open science hardware didn't really exist, um, or it wasn't well defined. And so step one in year one is um, get, that, get that defined. What is, what, what is the meaning of this movement? Why does it matter? And why should people care? Not only to sort of define what we're doing, to try to bring people in from the outside so they, so they knew what we were talking about. So that's the Gosh Manifesto. So if you haven't seen it, um, it's on the web. Um, Max and I kind of just collated the ideas that were already there. And then for quite a number of months after the conference, people contributed ideas, edits, changes. We actually just abandoned the whole first thing and started again. Um, uh, and I think we ended up with something that people generally um, appreciated. We've had, if you scroll down to the bottom, we've had 250 some odd people sign on to this document. Um, and if you just look through the elements, I think it's the things that Jenny just referenced. So. Um, yeah, sorry, not quite. There you go. Thank you. So number one, gosh is accessible, and that has a variety of meanings. Accessibility is not just about cost, though that's the one that seems to get picked up in the media the most. Accessibility is also about usability. It's about diversity of types of people who can use that particular piece of hardware. Um, so there's a lot that goes into the accessible um, column. Gosh makes science better. So um, reproducibility is a key one that gets referenced a lot. That's the way we can make science better. GOSH helps do that by making the equipment on which people are doing work reproducible. GOSH is ethical. I think that one's fairly straightforward and something that everyone in this room can agree with. Uh, changes the culture of science. I think we all see um, uh, incentives that are not in line with what we believe they should be, both in industry and in academia. Um, and I think the, the hope is that we can push things in that direction. Democratization of science, um, again, kind of relates to access, um, but also relates to um, getting stuff out to, um, to non-scientists. Gosh has no high priests. We had a lot of discussions about this one before we put it up there. Um, really, the idea is that um, we don't take people for their word just because of their position. right? Uh, that's a simple way to put it. I think Max could interpret it a little bit differently. There's a variety of interpretations, but basically, um, we're not trying to elevate a single person. We're trying to get people to elevate each other, and, and uh, that's the hope. Um, anyway, you can, there's, there's more. I don't have to read every single one of these, but if you haven't read this, please read through it. And each of those, there's a drop down that describes um, what what each of those things uh, was. So. Um, so that was the manifesto that came out of last year, uh, and our hope then is to take this to the next phase, which is creating a roadmap on the basis of these ideas so that we can move, move forward as a community to try to get more of this. Right? The long-term goal is more of this, um, in whatever way that means, in terms of quantity of material being used or diversity of material being used in, in both the academy and outside of it. Uh, so, with that, I'll hand it back to Jenny to talk about the roadmap for this year. Thank you very much. Um, so, yes, last year was good. We thought we would do another one. Um, but this year, we made a few changes at the request of the 2016 participants. Um, so we moved out outside of Europe and the US, and we set ourselves demographic goals to represent the diversity of the community in terms of disciplines, geographies, interests, gender. Sitting in this room are participants from over 30 countries, and over 50% of our participants are from outside North America and Europe. Among you are physicists, biologists, artists, community organizers, engineers, social scientists, musicians, IP lawyers, educators, curators, and more. So GOSH is not an organization, and it's not a tech conference. We're a social movement, and the theme of the 2017 meeting is building that movement. So we invited all of you, as builders of the movement, to feel supported, empowered, connected, and able to promote open science hardware in your own networks and communities, as well as playing a role in this larger collective. So Greg's described the manifesto, and that was a rallying point for the community, but the focus of the 2017 meeting is to map out what we individually and collectively can do to make open hardware for open science a reality. 
and the actions that specific groups and organisations that are perhaps not represented in this room can take towards the same goals, be they funders, institutions, policy makers, or others with positions of influence. And we want to provide you with the language and the evidence to talk to your peers and institutions about making change happen. GOSH allows multiple futures for science. So using a roadmap, we intend to change the norms within established institutional science so researchers openly share knowledge and technology. And as Greg mentioned, that really means that research can happen in or out of the lab, in or out of the academy, in or out of industry and commercial spaces, and really in places it would not usually happen. So we want to say a massive thank you to you all for taking time to come and be part of this. And to those of you who are visiting us this afternoon, we hope you consider making Open Science Hardware a part of your own work and practice, and also follow up with some of the amazing projects that you've been introduced to this afternoon. And thank you especially to all those who produce posters and exhibits um, for outside. It was amazing to see the energy and the interest that there was um, among so many people passing through, as well as the GOSH attendees. So I think that um, concludes our introduction to GOSH as a movement, and we're going to end this section of the talks with an introduction to an outcome from GOSH 2016. So I think I mentioned to people who were in the room earlier that the, the outcome of the activity after GOSH 2016 was some of the most intense I've seen after any meeting. Um, one of those outcomes um, was a journal for open hardware. And so we're now going to have a brief introduction to the journal. So I'd like to welcome Toby Wenzel to introduce um, the Journal of Open Hardware.